Hey, what's going on, guys? Psych Guys back in it for another video. Yes, uh, further for us. Oh, yeah, you know it. All who subscribe to our channel, thank you guys so much. You guys rock. Seriously, hordes up, baby. No doubt um, for believing in this product. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Uh, and as always, this video is going to be no exception. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, what's Psychi all about? Psychi is all about three things. Three things. Number one, high energy. Number two, high intensity. And last, number three, high passion. Uh, I am Psychi. I'm here to go ahead and teach psychiatry psychology as best as possible. Uh, this is a field of medicine that I love and adore. So I'm going to spread out knowledge to you good people. So yeah, without further ado, this video, let's talk about it. There is a lot of good learning and teaching points here. So stick around for that because you can definitely learn uh, some good stuff here. What I want you to look out for is that theme of collective corporatocracy versus individualism, uh, the individual, okay? Uh, that sort of uh, power imbalance, uh, uh, employer versus employee, uh, parent versus child, teacher versus student, right? You see this sort of imbalance? So look out for that sort of theme, the societal theme that we see that's very common in today's day and age and it has always been through the test of time. So yeah, enjoy guys. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'll catch you on the flip side and check out my vid. Take care. Okay, last video of the year, let's make it count. And just a heads up, just so this video doesn't get taken down because of recent policy changes and to respect the YouTube community, I'm going to refer to the main individual that this video is about as Craig. And I'm going to show you a picture of a stick figure. And notice how I haven't spoken about him or made any videos since the policy changes. So yeah, clearly just try to stay within YouTube's guidelines as best as possible. Now I wish that I could say the same about Craig, but I can't. Make no mistake. To me at least it's clear that he's violating YouTube's community guidelines on a regular basis. And just a heads up, I'm just focusing only on his recent videos. Since the policy changes that I'm referring to are recent in his defense. In particular though, he is violating the section where it says violent or dangerous content. Let's take a look at YouTube's community guidelines platform page. So I'm on the web page. Okay. So it says here violent or dangerous content, hate speech, pred behavior. Sorry, there's trigger words that you, you can't say I heard. Um, so pred behavior, uh, graphic violence, malicious attacks, and content that promotes harmful or dangerous behavior isn't allowed on YouTube. Then it further says harmful or dangerous content, violent or graphic content, violent criminal organizations, hate speech, harassment, and cyberbullying. Now, in all fairness, I'm not sure how long this policy has been here on YouTube as I've only been here four months now. But if this policy has been implemented many, many years ago, then right off the bat, Craig clearly is violating a lot of the tenets here. Pred behavior. I don't know about you, but a guy in his 30s uh, rating girls close to half his age on a scale uh, from 1 to 10 seems kind of pretty to me. Uh, malicious attacks. I don't know about anyone else here, but I think going after Shane Dawson and trying to debase him and accuse him more or less of allegedly being a pedophile, wouldn't that constitute a malicious attack? Or what about Eugenia Cooney, who was struggling with an eating disorder? Craig has a video where he was mocking her and more or less attacking her and her eating disorder by doing some sort of stupid skit about some sort of lame cooking show. By the way, don't know if you know this YouTube, but individuals with, with eating disorders, whether it's anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa, or even the newly coined DSM-5 binge eating disorder, they're all at a higher risk of death from suicide. Did you know that YouTube? YouTube, did you know that? And if you did, how is this guy still allowed to make videos? But let's just focus on the more recent videos because, hey, people make mistakes. Maybe YouTube spoke to him or reprimanded him in some way. Who knows? But, oh no, oh no, violent or graphic content. Craig clearly has violated this provision here in my humble opinion. His throwing tantrums in pretty much every video, it seems like the past few months, clearly depicts violent and graphic content. His throwing tantrums and screaming real loud at the audience and tearing curtains down, for example. If this is not violent for you, YouTube, then what is? Let's not forget about how he throws himself down and violently thrashes and more than likely fakes his own seizures. You know what? Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and let's just say that he's having a legitimate seizure. Is this appropriate, YouTube, for this to be shown on your forum? 
I mean, I get it if it was like an educational slash instructional video informing the viewers on what to look out for and recognize and what to do when someone is having a seizure. I get that, but it's not. It's just the same video over and over and over again of his throwing tantrums, shouting violently, uh, vomiting sometimes or trying to vomit, spitting out gross stuff. Sometimes, you know, harassing the viewers also. Oh, that's the other thing. Harassment is supposed to be prohibited here on this forum, right? You're changing your anti-bullying harassment policy, right? Well, apparently not with this guy because it's okay for him to harass all the viewers by allowing him to shout and threaten lawsuits on people. Oh, and by the way, harassment is what Craig is doing. Harassing the viewers, shouting at the viewers, bullying the viewers by making threats to the viewers. This is classic harassment. Not spinning it and wrongly designating harassment as a continuation of multiple videos about an individual. No. Here's a perfect example. Remember when, oh, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, the lovely Di Princess Di. Remember when she tragically died in the 90s? Remember how every night on the nightly news, there were video clips about her for weeks on weeks on and more or less? Was that harassment? No. The media was rather paying its respects uh, to the legacy of such an incredible woman. But according to your definition, NBC, ABC, CBS, BBC, uh, everyone uh, would have all been harassing the royal family when all they were doing was just reporting the news, reporting the facts, and more or less paying homage to her. Trust me, out of anyone here on this platform, I would know best about what constitutes harassment and bullying as I am a board-certified child psychiatrist. Harassment slash bullying usually has to have some sort of malicious intent behind it. So please clarify that policy better. Otherwise, you'll get what we're seeing here. Good-hearted YouTubers such as myself who are looking out for the safety of others who have to in turn radically reduce their content about others uh, with the others being the ones who are getting away and doing the harassing on a continual constant basis. Don't you think these policies only favor the ones who need to be really looked at? I do. And the sad thing is that all his videos, even though it's gotten to become one big laugh fest by many who tune in to see what fake, silly, and rather pathetic shenanigans this grown man in his mid-30s is going to pull off this time around, but the sad thing is that his videos are at this point in time nothing of added value, only more so a mockery of people with disabilities such as individuals having a seizure disorder or true access one mental conditions. Not saying he doesn't have a true access one. Uh, access one basically is a non-personality disorder, okay? But then again, I cannot comment on much because I have not interviewed him at all. And this is a disclaimer as in all my videos that he is not my client slash patient. And as a result, everything discussed here is just based on theories and hypotheses and hence nothing is official. So why hasn't this guy gotten deplatformed yet? Let's talk about three reasons to why I think this is the case. Now again, these are my opinions, and I may be way off, but this is what I've sort of, sort of gathered following the case the past three months or so. Reason number one, the shareholder reason. There's rumors out there that Craig is a company shareholder of company stocks, and hence this is the reason to why YouTube is not doing anything to him. Well, first off, that's not true because I trade stocks actively and know that YouTube is not a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange or any of the major exchanges at all. But let's just say and pretend that this rumor is true and let's just say that uh, Craig does own, I don't know, let's just put out a number such as 10% nah, of the company, which is by the way a mighty large number and that would make him very, very, very rich, but just throw it out there. Say he does own some percentage of the company or is part of the board. Well, I doubt that this would be the case also because in this situation, for someone to be a part owner of the company or part of some sort of internal board, usually these individuals such as in Craig's case, these individuals are usually swept away and thrown away because a major company such as a YouTube would not want someone such as a Craig moving forward representing them especially with all the recent bad PR that Craig is bringing in, uh, especially with all the recent allegations of potential inappropriate child grooming and the FBI being involved. Again, of course, he's innocent before guilty, right? As I've stated in my past vids, 
But no, a, a company such as YouTube would not want to be represented by such an individual. And usually, 10 times out of 10, the company usually will find a way to pay off him or her uh, by terminating their mutual agreement uh, with one another and paying that person uh, what's called go away money uh, by this company, such as uh, YouTube, uh, you know, taking that temporary initial hit. Uh, however, in the long run, they're going to be okay because now they got rid of that potential troublemaker, bad PR individual, right? So yeah, the fact that Craig is still hanging around making videos shows to me that more than likely reason number one is not the reason and he more than likely doesn't have any major company ownership for YouTube to be to want to try to make him go away. In fact, I highly doubt that he has any company ownership at all, to be honest. Reason number two, the blackmail reason. Now, could Craig have some friends in high places and have some sort of dirt on one of the major YouTube big boys, such as the founders, uh, the CEO, the CFO, that sort of thing? I highly doubt this would be the case also. Just look at his background. I mean, here's a guy from Washington State. Uh, YouTube is based in California. Uh, Craig at one point went off to the Air Force, uh, served some time there, I, I believe being stationed in Korea. Uh, thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, and then he returned back to Washington. Throughout these last 10 plus years or so, uh, Craig has been uploading silly, goofy, and stupid clowny immature videos, uh, creeping it out and taking custody of an underage girl and rating girls uh, from a scale of 1 to 10. Next thing you know, he's allegedly flying off to meet off with some young women in hotel rooms and such. So yeah, I mean, so yeah, he doesn't strike me as the type as to be serious enough uh, to have made all these, you know, personal connections. I mean, maybe he might have talked to some of the YouTube big boys on the phone, but my guess is that it was probably more on a superficial level uh, to really know and discover insider dirt to the point of uh, his being able to blackmail YouTube. Uh, more than likely, one has got to know the person, the other party, uh, and that usually requires living and breathing uh, and knowing how to play the game, you know, and sort of get into that system. You know, knowing the surroundings day in and day out for them to be able to catch or, or you know, or be exposed to that sort of uh, scandalous stuff. And, and, you know, Craig, with all due respect, uh, he doesn't seem like the type that has that sort of that sort of cognitive savvy or even to be even trusted, you know. So, I mean, just based on his immature, goofy videos that he kept uploading in the past, you know. So, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, he just doesn't strike me as sort of that sort of guy. Uh, so, I doubt that this applies here, in my humble opinion, um, just from a logistical uh, point of view. Reason number three, the legal risk reason. So out of the three, to me, this is what I believe is the more than likely reason. And if I were to have made this video, say, 10 years ago, I would not have been able to come up with this reason at all. Now, here's a warning. This is kind of a spoiler. And if you're in your teens and 20s, just a little warning. What I'm going to say here may ruin uh, your growing up process into the real world experience. And if you are one of those types that just likes to see, feel, or experience it for yourself, then please stop this video now because what I'm going to reveal is what I've sort of gathered about the, how the world works and that we live in based on my interactions and experiences. And honestly, I myself would have loved to have watched a video similar to this one uh, of someone explaining how the world works so that it would bring some better awareness in terms of what to expect in certain situations. Uh, but in regards to this specifically, anytime there is a lot of outrage about something such as how there's so much outrage about Craig by a lot of other YouTubers and more importantly, uh, the YouTube viewers. Uh, and if nothing is done, there is something going on behind the scenes. And usually whenever there's something that is the obvious right answer in terms of what needs to happen, but isn't done, there more times than none, there's some sort of potential uh, legal issue or potential legal ramification or some sort of asterisk to, or, or holding it up. What I'm trying to say is that, okay, look, YouTube is no dummy. Don't think they're just blowing this off. They're more than likely taking this seriously, even though on the surface, it may appear that they're um, just, you know, blowing it off. Because I'm pretty sure they know about all the outrage and backlash that this one guy has created. I can guarantee you that, okay, especially with there being like, I don't know, over 90%, I'm just throwing a number out here, over 90% of vids out, you know, on this guy, uh, they're like all like anti-Craig vids, right? Because of his low favorability rating. Uh, so why keep him? Well, YouTube definitely knows about the situation. I mean, how can they not? 
However, my feeling is that they probably consulted with their legal team behind the scenes in terms of what to do. My guess is that probably their legal team more than likely advised the CEO and the rest of the YouTube team to not terminate this guy. It's not because he's a kind of a hothead who's threatened lawsuits and they're afraid that if they terminated his account that he would legally go after you know them and throw a lawsuit on them. No, he's got nothing on them and there's nothing to sue, right? So, or at least nothing that I know of uh, that he can go after uh, them with. Uh, in fact, on the flip side, there are so many reasons to why YouTube can terminate his account, uh, with many being the reasons that I listed above. Uh, but I think YouTube and their lawyers are concerned about this. Okay, say if they were to terminate his channel right now. This could pose a problem because say they terminated his channel because of the accusations that are coming out because of the alleged child grooming. Well, you and I know that there are hundreds and hundreds of dangerous preds out lurking on the internet, especially when they, meaning YouTube, can't monitor or police the entire YouTube because of the vastness of this forum with their limited resources of a few bots. So what do you think will happen if, say, one of these preds, God forbid, did something terrible or tragic and took advantage and killed a young minor who happened to be a YouTube viewer? The lawyers of that young minor victim they can come back to YouTube and say, hey, you went ahead and terminated the channel of an alleged child groomer, and meanwhile you did nothing with this one guy who actually went out and raped and killed the poor minor that I'm representing? So yeah, if anything, banning Craig can be shooting YouTube in the foot and potentially be asking indirectly for more trouble. The last thing YouTube wants to do is set any sort of legal precedent. It would just only open up an unnecessary can of other potential legal troubles slash lawsuits. The best thing is for them to do what they're doing now. Maintain consistency, stay the course, and only terminate people's channels of individuals who are convicted through the court of law such as Austin Jones. And not through the court of public opinion. This will eliminate any possibility of potential unnecessary and further and preventable lawsuits from hitting their doorstep. Austin Jones, by the way, for those of you who don't know his case, uh, he was a popular YouTuber who earlier this year was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison for persuading underage girls to send him sexually explicit videos of themselves, of whom YouTube terminated his account only after finding out about his being officially convicted through a court of law of his pred actions slash behaviors. So yeah, YouTube is doing the right thing from an organizational standpoint. Sure, from an ethical, moralistic, and individualistic standpoint, it's the wrong thing, but from a legal, bureaucratic, and company slash corporation, corporatocracy standpoint is the only thing to do. And I'm sure that they all feel bad for the alleged victims of Craig, if what they say is true uh, and alleged. But at the end of the day, YouTube has got to protect its own best interests. And, and I mean, who can blame them? This is risk management 101. The risks of themselves getting into potential legal trouble outweigh the benefits of setting a good example, a, a good and right and proper ethical and moral example. And my guess is that they're probably not even thinking about the potential psychological damage that can be occurring to viewers, especially to the younger viewers who have more fragile and immature egos to begin with due to the primitive developmental stage that they're in or the probable internalization of violence and hence in turn desensitization of violence just from a simple act of watching his videos. That's probably not on YouTube's mind at the moment. It's how can we best deal with the situation that we're in with this guy and how can we best be able to hopefully eventually get out of the situation so that we can live to see another day. Now allow me to switch gears here and quickly catch everyone up to speed and recap of what has transpired the last decade or so since we're almost into a new one or have entered a new one depending on when you watch this video. So here you got this one guy, he at one point in time earlier in his career was doing relatively well. He was a top 20 YouTuber at one point in time, no controversy, just having that bad boy moniker given to him. I mean, so what? Just an edgy emo kind of guy. He's bringing in the bacon, balling on beast mode. He's able to buy two Teslas and a brand new house. Dude's basically got uh, what people dream of aspiring. Uh, two forms of easy guaranteed income coming in. Uh, his donors from Patreon, 
and his income from YouTube uh, from just sitting at home and making silly, immature videos of him goofing around. I mean, he's basically got the life corn style. Then all of a sudden, disaster strikes, and a few months ago, the whole grooming controversy really hits the fan. I mean, I believe it was always there in the background percolating, to be honest, but it didn't really get set off until the Chris Hansen camp took notice of it and brought it to the forefront. Now he's in big trouble. He starts really acting erratically, whether that was him or his way of reacting to stress or possibly a mental illness of his being exacerbated and captured on camera from the stress or his way of faking it and making a mockery of the horror controversy or whatever the case be, who knows, right? But know for a fact that you can bet that his two main income sources, uh, that being Patreon and YouTube, you know that they're watching this train wreck explode. And having no idea how to react to this train wreck, they both probably decided to just kick back and wait and see what happens. Because, you know, here's this guy uh, that's not been charged with anything, and train wrecks in the entertainment world are not necessarily a bad thing. And if anything, they can bring in attention and media ratings, right? There's no such thing as bad press, right? Well, I think throughout the entire time, both parties, YouTube and Patreon, had their hand on the fire him trigger, but we're on the sidelines again, just watching to see what happens, not knowing when or how to get rid of him. Really, to be honest, uh, probably not even knowing what to do or how to react in the situation because they probably haven't even been in the situation before. And I think what happened was when Craig doxed his ex-girlfriend, uh, doxing, by the way, means uh, the act of someone cowardly revealing personal information on the internet uh, of someone else's. Uh, but when uh, Craig doxed her, I think that was when Patreon decided to use that as an excuse to get rid of any relations with this guy. Patreon is the real winners here. The first second that they saw a real chance to run for the exits, they did. And Craig was right and correct to say in his one of his videos, he complained that Patreon terminated him for something that wasn't directly responsible to what he did. Yeah, he doxxed his ex-girlfriend, but it was on a different platform, on Twitter, not Patreon. But still, Patreon terminated the relationship, and it was a brilliant move on their behalf because they knew that this was their best way to get rid of such a loose, unpredictable canon such as Craig. Craig to them was like a ticking time bomb waiting to blow up and they just decided to exit out completely and throw the time bomb for YouTube to hold. They didn't want any more part of it. Yeah, Craig probably helped to bring them traffic and they probably got a small percentage of his donor revenue, but they'll take the hit. He can easily be replaced by another bad boy uh, with another Patreon account holder who doesn't have any sort of grooming controversy hanging over his or her head. And I bet you knowing how he operates, Craig probably is ticked off. Uh, in fact, we know he's ticked off because after Patreon got rid of him, every video pretty much afterwards for his, more or less was his begging for Patreon to take him back or his being angry with Patreon. But guess what? Patreon will never take you back, Craig. That I know for sure. Why would they? Why would any company take that risk? Heck, I bet you that he first tried to beg for Patreon to take him back, knowing that was one of his major sources of revenue. And when that didn't work, I bet you he resorted to his predictable, threatening to sue the company tactic. Which, by the way, will not work either because Patreon does have standards and guidelines for all their users to follow. Just as in the case with YouTube. They also have more or less the same basic conduct standards of guidelines, code of conduct, though they frankly dropped the ball and missed out on their golden opportunity to get rid of him. YouTube had their chances to pass the ticking time bomb to someone else, that someone mainly be in Patreon. In fact, YouTube knew about Craig way before Patreon and could have done what Patreon did to them, especially with all the negative backlash that this guy was creating. Uh, not to mention that alleged FBI investigation that was going on in the background and the possibility of being dragged into it. And then you have, uh, you know, this Chris Hansen guy bugging you every other day for an interview. Oh, and that's the other thing. Don't expect that interview, Mr. Hansen, to happen. I can't ex uh, speak on the behalf of YouTube as I'm not on their side, nor am I connected with them at all or affiliated. But what I can say is that I've seen this tactic that's being done by YouTube. Done so many times in the real world that it's not even funny. You gotta understand, as a professional myself, 
I've exchanged handshakes and rubbed elbows with some pretty powerful and very important people in my short lifetime thus far. Just enough to know all the games and the tactics that these people and corporations use and utilize. What YouTube is doing to Mr. Hansen is a basic tactic that any smart, reputable organization would be doing uh, if faced in the same situation that YouTube is currently in. I call it the die tactic or the delay slash ignore tactic. This is a way for any individual or organization similar to that of YouTube situation to just say, yeah, 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 we're looking into this or maybe not responding back or intermittently responding back basically with one goal and one goal of delaying just to string the other party along so that he or she doesn't feel completely blown off. And look, I don't think the CEO is maliciously or even purposely meaning to ignore Mr. Hansen in a malicious manner. My guess is that YouTube's lawyers probably advised her to use the delay slash intermittently ignore Chris as long as possible, instilling false hope when the end result will be the same. No interview, or at least no interview on his terms. Maybe a controlled interview on YouTube's terms with maybe the questions predetermined possibly, but anything else, yeah, don't hold your breath. Why else would YouTube potentially set themselves up to a highly skilled aficionado interviewer such as a Mr. Chris Hansen? Who knows what the right line of questions to ask YouTube, you know, the questions that YouTube would rather prefer not to answer. And yeah, I did see Mr. Hansen's last video. And yeah, he did mention how he was upset of how the CEO is being interviewed by other interviewers. Uh, I forgot the exact terms he used, but he did seem upset about how YouTube only has corresponded with his camp through paragraphs and emails. And guess what? That's all you're going to get, Mr. Hansen. So this shouldn't surprise you even though you promised to them that you would be fair and ask fair questions. What is fair grounds to you may not be fair grounds to them. From a corporation standpoint, believe me, I see what Chris is doing and wants what's best from an ethical and moral standpoint. However, YouTube I think feels the same way, but the last thing they wanna do is to subject themselves with the possibility of being trapped one-on-one -on -one with someone who is highly top-notch and highly skilled, a trained expert of questioning, such as someone like that of a Chris Hansen, or like myself who spends a third of his job, of my jobs perfecting the art of questioning, or like, you know, like a police interrogator or an attorney, you know, you catch my drift. Um, another YouTuber, another content creator, yeah, no problem. I mean, just anyone else uh, who doesn't have any sort of training or expertise in questioning, they're okay with. But others, including, you know, Mr. Hansen, yeah, no way, uh-uh, no way at all. Uh, it could potentially spell disaster and put them in legal jeopardy, maybe not intentionally, but unintentionally, and that's the risk that any reputable top organization is not willing to take. And if anyone is questioning this and says, hey, but that's being very disrespectful to Mr. Chris Hansen, who's this top-notch famous journalist who's been on television and has been doing this for many, many decades, have a decency to respect the man. Well, not to take any sides, but YouTube is respecting him by having not banned him, banned his vids, and or not terminated his channel, right? Because of their new anti-harassment, anti-bullying rule to where it states, and I'm paraphrasing, that multiple continuous videos about someone is considered harassment and further negative action can be taken on one's channel. And since Take a Seat, you know, which is Chris Hansen's main channel that exclusively only talks about one person and one person only, the fact that nothing to his channel has been done or to his videos shows that deep down inside, YouTube respects him. So don't blame YouTube for doing the least amount of work needed to defuse the situation, corresponding the least amount to show that they're not completely blowing, blowing off the man, you know, allowing the CEO to be interviewed by other individuals to show that she is not neglecting their audience. This is their path of least resistance and the smart path to take, in my humble opinion, from a company slash corporation standpoint. Don't hate the player, hate the game. The other thing to consider in all of this, in my humble opinion, is that YouTube is now stuck with Craig. The best case scenario, and I'm not a lawyer advising anyone and neither am I giving any sort of professional advice, but to me, it would be in their best interest to just wait it out. They're stuck now, and the best case scenario left for them at this point in time is for the supposed FBI investigation to run and take its course. 
you know, just for them to play the wall and just continue to hide in the shadows while on the same token putting out, you know, changes to their anti-harassing slash anti-bullying policies just to appease any political pressures coming from the outside and just wait and wait and wait until something happens to where they can reclaim uh, that get out of free jail card again. That same card that they had a few months ago when it was both Patreon and YouTube sharing it, right? But since Patreon used it and got out of jail, uh, YouTube was stuck there all alone. And the best case is for them just to wait it out and hope that Craig does something eventually, uh, you know, or something's uncovered or found out that eventually gets charged with something through the courts so that when that happens, uh, YouTube can quickly, you know, ax him just as they did with Aston Jones. If they were to terminate any relationship right now, the risks of something potentially happening are just too strong and outweigh the benefits uh, or terminating and getting rid of any association, association with him. Allow me to quickly explain. This is a guy who just recently lost one of his major financial support systems. If YouTube were to term terminate his channels right now and in turn their relationship, now he's going to have no real way to financially support himself and his family or none that I know of. This in turn can lead one to quickly spiral down hill and next thing you know that individual may be in a constant state of dysphoria to where it puts him or her at risk to harm himself and or others around him. And if something tragic happens and if the YouTube terminating relationships with Craig is the last thing or the most recent catalyst prior to his acting out and doing something drastic to where something tragic happens to him or others around him, that won't be a good thing and YouTube can be held liable in a wrongful death lawsuit, right? And what's even more complicating the picture is that this is a guy who even though on the surface all his stuff seems fake and he's even admitted on video game platform live streaming discord chat rooms that all of his vids are fake and that he's acting, the reality is that when you know, uh, you know what his a fan, and you soon wake up to having no way to financially support yourself or your family or the feeling that there's no way that you can, you would like to financially support yourself and that the ways that you are using for 10 plus years have now been stolen and taken away from you. Yeah, it's very plausible for something to happen. Hopefully not, but the risks are definitely elevated, especially in an individual who, let's face it, may not be the most predictable and stable individual. I mean, we're talking about a guy who one minute is dancing in a silly banana costume, then next thing you know, he's running around in his underwear, pouring kombucha tea all over his body, and then the next he's in a rented out hotel room crying in the shower, and then the next he's in a tent in a, with a grizzly Adam's beard. So yeah, all of this probably, you know, is fake more than likely, but again, it's not the present they're worried about. YouTube is worried more about the future, more about what will happen since now there is no fall guy, no backup. Before there was a fall guy, YouTube was the fallback backup plan after Patreon left the building. However, now there's no fall guy, no backup plan. And if YouTube left, yeah, I mean, who really knows for sure right of what may happen and YouTube nor any reputable organization is not going to take that risk at all. And who can blame them? So finalizing things here, YouTube is playing this as best as possible. The problem is that we live in a lawsuit happy society. We're living in a McDonald's hot coffee spilled on my lap. Uh oh, it's time for a lawsuit microcosm. So easy to shift accountability and blame onto others. Any little mishap or accident, uh-oh, time to call 1-800-GET-ME-A-LAWYER. Ever wonder why healthcare costs have gone up? There's a term that myself and my fellow physician colleagues call it. Not sure if it's a universal term, but I know in medicine it's pretty much well known and we call it CYA or cover your ass. Part of the reason why healthcare costs have gone up is because physicians are ordering unnecessary tests and procedures just to protect themselves of any potential lawsuits that lawyers may throw at them. Say you bump your head and go to the ER. Guess what? The ER doc is going to order that $1,000 CT scan of your head whether you like it or not. Not because he or she's worried that you've got a sudden uh, subdural hematoma or uh, an intracerebral hemorrhage, 
of any sorts, but more so he or she is more interested in protecting oneself just in case in the 0.0000000001% chance that you have an internal brain bleed. Not only that, but don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer here, but I know a few physicians who spend more time worrying and focusing about how to not get sued than on focusing on the real things that they should be focusing on, such as optimizing good quality patient care. So this is more of a reflection, uh, more of the litigious society that we live in. Another example is the knee-jerk reaction of luring up to solve our problems just to make things e easier for us, better for us. Remember that one cruise ship toddler case that occurred over the summer? Real quickly, it involved a grandfather who happened to pick up his beautiful toddler and outstretched her so that she can get a more majestic view of the scenery, only to accidentally drop her to her death. He claims that he thought there was a window preventing any sort of fall, when in reality there was no window at all. The bottom line is that it appeared as if it was one big sad and tragic accident. However, a few months later after this happened, I kid you not, but you would think that the entire family would be grieving from this tragedy, right? Especially if it was an accident and such. But a few months later, there was news that the family was suing the cruise ship. So again, from a philosophical standpoint, we live in a litigious society. So the bottom line to all this, to finalize this episode, is to not blame YouTube, blame society. Back. All right, well, hey guys, I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys like it, please like, comment, subscribe. Definitely out of the three, definitely subscribe if you haven't because trust me on this, you do not want to miss out. Psych Guy's going to evolve next year, 2020. We're going to do some things differently and so on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. I don't want to say anything yet exactly what specifically I'm referring to, but definitely catch it, uh, check it out. And the only way to check it out is to subscribe because you do not want to go ahead and miss out. And lastly, hey, most importantly, I want you guys, each and every one of you guys, have a very, very uh, happy uh, new year. I uh, hope you had a great celebration. Go out and eat a pizza. Go ahead and drink some juice. Make some memories. I don't know. Uh, go ahead and have some fun. Have a ball. Uh, but make sure it's safe uh, and done in a, in a very safe and uh, uh, loving, kind of empathic kind of way. Uh, that's what we're all here at Psych Guy. So, yeah. Okay, so I gotta go and take off. Uh, I gotta hit the road. I got a jet. I got a three hour drive in front of me. Uh, hook them. All right, so uh, before we go ahead and do that, I got something. Very important to say. You don't feel like doing it. You want to do this? Yeah, it's good. You don't feel like doing it. Take my hand and listen. Dance, beautiful. Oh.